Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 18. In this video, we'll be adding blood particle systems and decals. I've prepared a particle system, so let's take a look. Alright, and let's go ahead and instantiate this on my on skill hit. So we'll go to Play Game, Skills, and on skill hit, let's do an object instantiate, and I'll drop in my prefab. And position, we'll use a temporary variable that's set by the on skill hit event, and we have hit point, which is a temporary vector 3. So we'll go to variables, get temp vector 3. And that's hit point with a capital P. And my particle system also shoots forward on the z-axis. So I'll want that to be rotated in the same direction as my player. So we can use a object, get angles, and we could use the player block or we could use the temporary game object skill owner so we'll use that temporary game object skill owner all right also where is the hit point if we look at the skill itself we have a hit height and that's always starts at 50 but that's going to be around the waist of our enemy so let's move it up to 75 or 80 so it's a bit higher on the chest so let's see how it looks in game. All right. So let's move on to the second part of the video and we're going to make some blood decals. First we need textures and I found mine on www.textures.com and I simply went to decals stains and I downloaded a few that looked like puddles once I had them in game we have them imported here and we want to place these into the scene so we could make a 3d plane However, we'll see that it's made up of 100 squares, and we only want one square, so we can actually do a 3D quad. And a quad is basically, where is it? A quad is basically one one hundredth of a plane, so that'll work. That'll work just fine. So let's go to 3D quad, and we'll want to rotate it so that it's facing upwards as it's only visible from its front by 90 degrees on the x-axis and now we'll need some materials for our decals to be so to make our first material I guess we could either right click and create a material or we can drop the stain texture right onto it which will give us a material. And we will use the standard shader, but we're not going to use opaque. We'll use transparent. I will give the material a red color. Let's see how that looks. Also notes it's casting a shadow. So I will turn off cast shadows. Let's say we were finished and we saved this as a prefab blood decal one and I dropped it from my hierarchy into my project window as a prefab. We have a big problem and that's when we instantiate game objects, they get set to a position and rotation 
of 0, 0, 0. So to fix that, we'll make an empty game object, and we'll put our decal inside. I'm going to get rid of my first prefab that I made and make a new one with the child, which is rotated. Also, one thing to note is that when we instantiate our decal onto the ground, it may appear under the ground. So we will go ahead and grab the child and we'll raise it up by, I don't know, about 0 0.01 on the Y axis. Now if I hit apply and drop in a new prefab, we can see it's always on top of the terrain. I'll make a few more. I have three more textures, so I'll make three more prefabs. The colors are a bit different, and that's because the color of these stained textures were all a bit different to begin with. So I'll change the red on the materials so that they match. And maybe I'll add some transparency as well. I will make four prefabs now. And now let's add these to a list, just like we did our sound effects. So I'll grab my zombie in the scene, and we could edit whenever we make changes to this zombie in the scene. We can just make sure to hit the apply button at the top right of the inspector, or we could click on select and simply edit the zombie prefab straight out of the project window. So let's go to on start. We have, from the last video, in Enemy Diversity, where we randomize the texture, we also want to make another list, and that's where we're going to prepare our blood decals for instantiation later. I'll make a new event on start, and let's do a common create list, and let's call this blood decals. And add to list, we'll add four. And I'll drop the prefabs in. Perfect. Let's do our on actor death. This is when we die. Let's do an object instantiate. So here we want to set a temporary variable. And that temporary variable will be a common get from list. And we'll call this random decal. So we'll get a random integer. So that's a math random int. And we had 0, 1, 2, 3. So four options, 0 to 3 on actor death. We'll get a random value between 0 and 3 with the max inclusive checkbox of list, and that list was called blood decals, and that is in the ply blocks of cell. And now we want to create an instance of random decal, so that's a temporary game object called random decal, and we want our position, object get position of cell. Let's do two things to our decal prefabs. I want to add a ply blocks. And here we want to spin the decal randomly and perhaps scale it a bit as well so that no decals will look the same. So let's do a common on start. And I'm going to just go to object and there's a rotate block. So let's rotate. We could do self or our child. Self should be fine. And let's rotate by, it wants a float here. Let's do a random float from math. Random float. And we'll do between 0 and 360. Around the y axis. So that will spin each decal randomly. And then let's also set the scale. So let's go back to object set scale, and now we want to 
the default scale would be 1, 1, 1, but we want to randomize the X and Y. So let's go to Math, Vector 3, Vector 3 from X, Y, Z. So now we can plug in three floats. Once again, we'll use the random float block for X and Y. Z will keep it 1. So we want this number to be, let's say, between 0.9 and 1.1. So we'll just change the scale just a little bit. And I'm going to right click and copy component and I'll paste as new on my other decals. This fly blocks is on the parent of the decal prefab game object. And so we're going to do rotate and we'll randomize the size. And then we're going to turn on the child. So by default, We'll turn the decals off with Alt-Shift-A or clicking the active checkbox. That way, they will spin and resize and then show up. If we start them on, we'll see them um, on one frame and then they'll spin on the second. So let's definitely do a object. And let's enable, disable the child. Perfect. And also the scale here, I did 0.9 to 1.1, but actually we're already at 1.9. So for this I'll do, yeah, I'll do 1.9 to 2.1. And then I'm going to copy these ply blocks to the other parent, paste as new, or paste values rather. And then let's make sure it's pointing to the correct child. We'll do the same for this guy. And lastly, on this game object. Then last but not least, we will turn off the children so that we can't see them yet. Then I will hit apply since I'm editing prefabs from the hierarchy in my scene. And let's give our sword a bit more damage so that we can kill them faster. Player melee on skill hit. I'm currently doing 5 damage, let's pump that up to 50 for this video. Now let's hit play and see how this looks. That's all for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and if you learned something, hit that like button. Join me next time, where we'll be putting a health bar over our enemy's head.